conclusion of take one, we're on take two, beginning of take two. We had to change locations uh, because of uh, conflict of schedule and other uh, meetings that were scheduled at the other location. Anyway, Paul, come on back over here. Let's continue with uh, with your list here, Paul. Okay. I was at David first. I was talking about some of the dates that are We got a better location now. <laughs> we got the ocean. <laughs> the bathroom. Water pipes, yeah. The bathroom is right there. Upstairs. Oh, I'll go in the way. Yeah, go ahead. Uh, it's something I did with Thorstad. And, uh, it's like it was December 2nd, 1978, that uh, we had a meeting out. And, Who's they? Yeah. Well, you continue with that. Oh, you, uh, you're, oh, you're going to talk about NAMLA? Okay, we're talking well, about NAMLA. I was NAMLA. talking about David Thorstein. And how right, right, okay. I was on uh, how I You're looking at your calendar there. And I have yeah. kind of marked. It's kind of weird how I mark things. I don't put anything except for. Will that, will that take a thing? Yeah. I'll have to get a close up on the head. It's. <laughs> Like, uh, I don't know how I even remember they like the marketing thing. They just got Nambla written there. That's when they formed Nambla, when they actually formed it. What was and the date on that again? December 2nd, 1978. Were you there? Yeah. When they in formed Nambla? Boston Church. Huh? In the Boston Church, yeah. Remember the name of the church? Uh, I got the name of it somewhere. Boston Community Church or something. Who was there when they formed it? David Thorstad, uh, a couple of the guys that I, they, they became the stirring members later on and stuff. I'm not exactly sure who was all there. I know David Thorstad was the main one there. Uh, I believe uh, Andretti was there. Andretti, uh, I think it's Andrea. He was a, kind of a kid at the time, so Bill Andrea. Um, and several other guys that were there also. I'm not sure exactly. How many people were there? Probably um, one to two dozen. Where were they from? Mainly from Boston. They used to be called the Boston Boise Committee, and then they changed them to becoming Boston Boise. what committee? Boise. Boise, okay. And B O I S E. Okay. Let that take it there? Yeah. I have to get a close up on the head of it. It's <coughs> like, uh, I don't know how I even remember the right marketing thing. They just got Nambla written there. That's when they formed Nambla, when they actually formed it. What was the date on that again? December 2nd, 1978. Were you there? Yeah. When they in formed the Boston Nambla? Church. Huh? In the Boston Church. Yeah. Remember the name of the church? Uh, I forgot the name of it somewhere. Boston Community Church or something. Who was there when they formed it? David Thorstad, uh, a couple of the guys that I, they, they became the stirring members later on, so I'm not exactly sure who was all there. I know David Thorstad was the main one there. Uh, I believe uh, Andretti was there. Andrea, uh, I think it's Andrea. He was a uh, Kind of a kid at the time, so Bill Andrew. Um, and several other guys that were there also. I'm not sure exactly. How many people were there? Probably um, one to two dozen. Where were they from? Mainly from Boston. They used to be called the Boston Boise Committee, and then they changed them to be Boston Boise. what committee? Boise. Boise, okay. And B O I S E. Okay. Except that sounds like something else. she gave me uh, And then I was at a convention in New York with Nambla in uh, June of uh, 
June of 1982, I went to uh, I think it was Washington D.C. for I think it was during the 19th or so. I got the date written somewhere, but I can't read it. It's how bad it is. This is a bad copy. It was for a nuclear demonstration. That was in Washington D.C. and stuff, and there were a bunch of us marching with a bunch of other groups that were marching against nuclear weapons. That was NAMBLA. Well, Mambo was part of it. There was some other demonstration that was taking place at the time so for an anti-nuclear demonstration. So it wasn't just Mambo. It was all kinds of groups. There was a big parade for it and everything. I just happened to take part in this with Mambo. Uh, then in October 82, I went to Philadelphia for a meeting that they were having. They had a... October 82. Yeah, 82. Okay. Now it was over, I think it's Columbus Day. It was in October. It was during the Columbus Day holiday and stuff. They had a meeting at the convention hall and stuff. Uh, the Amblock, yeah. Gay, yeah. They, well, they had other groups there, too. They had uh, the uh, Philadelphia gay and lesbian groups there. They had people from what they called Fag Rag and the magazine and stuff. They had uh, Robin from uh, the local gay youth movement they had out there and stuff. They, they had all the speaker, all their speakers and stuff from out there, and they had a. I don't remember the time I got that written down somewhere. I have to get into that, but I don't want to get into detail with it. We get into detail later if we have time. It depends on how much time we have. Okay. And then in December of '82, I went out to. Uh, well, how many people were at that Philadelphia meeting? There were a lot of people at the Philadelphia meeting. They had. Uh, FBI agents and everything else all around there. They had people. They had people from the press were taking pictures of them. They had all these gay people taking pictures of them. So it's kind of a big thing that I was shooting. Who's that? Who's the FBI doing there? Uh, I'm just, I think it, we think it was the FBI. They were bugging the places that they're trying to find out what was going on with this group, what they were trying to accomplish because it was a Nambla meeting. Yeah. But uh, who who all from Nambla was there? Oh, all the. David Thorstein was there, Bill Andrea, uh, the attorney that they had, which was uh, Michael J. Lavery, uh, I'm not sure if Hugh was there, I'm sure Wayne Sunday was present, uh, just uh, Robbie, Robert Rhodes, and Manny Rhodes, I'm not sure what his first name was. Were you molested at all these meetings? Well, we, there was, on the trips that we were there, yeah. So we molested the there. Boston meeting and the New York meeting and the Philadelphia meeting. Who molested you? Different people. I don't know who they all were. I mean, Thorstad, there was Hugh Hamill, there was Wayne Sunday, there was uh, Carl Allers, which was me. Uh, summer convention in June of 80 was a picnic and stuff like that. Yeah. Is that why they had you there? Me and other kids that were there, that's what my purpose was for. Okay, keep going. Anything more in Amber? I'll have to come back on them because there's a lot of them, but yeah. I'll go on with them. Well, let's discuss Amber later on. It depends on how much time we have. Okay. Uh, next name on the list is uh, Harry Anderson, who I met. Is um, that Harold Anderson? Yeah, Harold Anderson, I call him Harry. Whom I met through, uh, well, let's say Carlson's group. I had sexual relations with him, I think, it was about 10 times exactly. And I was usually at the Red Lion Inn. The, what, I, I think it was, I'm not sure, but I think it was still the Hilton at the time. They changed the name right about the last, the last part of the 70s or early part of the 80s, they changed the name from what Hilton to Red Line Inn, and I never had figured out which it was when I was there because I never paid attention to it much. 
Yeah, that's where most of them took place. I also went to Council Bluffs with them. And that was from 78 to 83. I was with him. In 83, we had a big argument. I didn't want anything to do with them. And that dealt with my friend Andy, who he was uh, doing sexual things and stuff. And I didn't want to be messing with my friend Andy. What do you mean, the sexual thing? Well, we were at some parties and stuff. And uh, he was having sex with him. So yeah. Andy was like about 12 years old. Andy was 12? What's happened to Andy? I don't know. I haven't... Was he doing kinky things or just straight sex? Well, mainly kinky things. Like what? Well, oral sex and... Uh, we tied him up and stuff like that, which is why I really got concerned because he was going to do the same things that he did with me to him. And this is like my little brother, so... Yeah. You know, can mess with him. So, did he mess with him in spite of your argument? He did up until then. And then I kind of was at all the parties and stuff, and it's like I kind of pulled Andy away from him. And Would Harold Anderson allow this? You didn't pull him away? He had nothing to say about it. Okay. Because I told uh, I won't bear that I wouldn't do it at the parties anymore. Actually, I wouldn't bring any more my friends to the parties if. Uh, he didn't keep him away from Andy. Because of the kinky things, or just in general? In general, I didn't like the guy. I never did. I mean, because he always tied me up and beat me and burned me cigarettes and stuff. I just didn't like him. What did he pay you to do that? No, no, no. Fifty, seventy-five dollars. Tight one, huh? Yeah. 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 Next person on the list is Kent Bruner, and I was with him about 10 to 20 times. Kent who? Kent Bruner, or Kenny Bruner. He's a long person. B R U N E R? Yeah, B R U N E R. He was involved with Walter Carlson's group, and that's how I met him. You see there. And that went on from 77 to 83 when I pulled away from Carlson. In 83, I pulled away from a lot of guys. I figured they didn't. I guess, well, personalizing Robinson at the time is to. We went, to, went for the money after that. They didn't go to Carlson's parties because they didn't get enough money for going to so they stopped and moved to. But it was actually, it was also because my stepdad died and a bunch of other friends died and stuff, and we just... They died? Your friends died? Well, I had a couple, of, I had one friend that, uh, a couple of friends that committed suicide, and, uh, my stepdad died, then my aunt died, and my great aunt died. Why did these, your friends commit suicide? Uh... Two of them, I had no, re I had no idea why they came suicide. The other one was involved with Satanism, and he just couldn't handle it anymore. And do they, do the Satanists encourage suicide? Uh, sometimes. It depends on what their, what their purpose for you is. They have no purpose for you. Yeah, they, they encourage you to, uh, encourage you to give yourself for a sacrifice, which I never seen any actually do. Give himself up for sacrifice? Yeah, I never seen him do that. Yeah. But you've seen him go involuntarily. Yeah. You told me the last time. Yeah. Uh, the next name is Joe Burke. He was also involved with uh, Walter Carlson's group, and that was up 10, 20 times from 77 to 83. What you time? know that I got in Omaha. And, uh, He's one I got mainly involved with with Carlson Group. He was the second one I got involved with in Carlson's group. And he's the one that got me involved with Andreessen directly. And, uh, so I don't know what he did for a living. All I know is that he, uh, like boys. I don't want to say much more. Um, Next guy is, well, was at the time I thought he was John Mahoney, and now I know that he's Eugene Mahoney. And uh, that went from 77 to about 80, 86, I had seen him at parties, and I had done a few sexual things with him under five times, I was with him five times, and more. Two times I did something directly with him, and then there was other times I was with him that he was with other young men and stuff. And, uh, I met him through Bear's group. 
And then there's another guy, his last name was Nelson. I don't know what his first name was, all I know that he was a lawyer. Well, these, this last one, is it no more? Nelson? The other one before that. Oh, yeah. Mahoney? Yeah. Mahoney. Mahoney. What's his, is it, what is he, his occupation? Uh, I don't know what his occupation is. Okay. I know that he was a pretty powerful. With all of you. Oh, break in here, Ted. You have a phone call from your sister. So oh, okay. Can you just to break in? You work for him and take it. Take it in here. Nelson. All I know is that he was a lawyer in the Omaha area. That's his last name. And I met him in 83 and 84. Oh, the guy is he? He's probably in his, well, at the time he was 83 and 84, he's probably in his 30s. Probably in his early to mid 30s. And I was with him twice. <coughs> I met him at one party with uh, there. Uh, this guy is uh, a guy named Jay Dura. He was also a lawyer. And uh, met him at a lot of parties in Omaha and I also seen him in Washington, D.C. And that was going on through 80 to 86. And I was with Barry and also with King. I know he was a, a lawyer. We talked a few times. I was with him like three times sexually. And he's from where? He's from Omaha. Okay. Uh, but he was in Washington, D.C. Yeah. Well, he went for a trip. Uh, a couple of trips went down there and stuff. But one trip I remember the most. This guy's uh, yes, Mike Heverin. He was a teacher out in, uh, I think it was Payne or something. He got canned because of giving minor, contributing delinquency to minor giving him cigarettes. But he had some very questionable tapes that I remember him getting stuff. Well, you, what time was that? When was that? It was from, uh, it was in 1980. Took a bunch of trips out to the other town and he used to film us doing different things. Porno films? <laughs> well, some of them were, but he filmed some other films too, but he also did that. With certain kids, he'd pick them out. It was a time about four times. What do you mean he'd pick them out? He kids would, on the street or kids that were with you? He picked out kids from his class. He was a teacher. Kids from his class and stuff. And he'd, they'd go on field trips and stuff, and then they would film different things, and then he'd pick them out during them trips and stuff, which ones he would start abusing sexually. He'd take pictures he'd of the ones he wanted to ones. go after. Those. Yeah, he'd figure out which ones were uh, easy targets. I wouldn't say anything. How could he? Oh, I see. The one, he was worried about the ones that would talk. Where, what town is he from? Uh, he was from, I think, I'm not sure if he was from South Omaha, but I know that he worked at uh, the Payne or one of the schools in Omaha. He got fired a couple years back. But you, oh, you said some school, Payne or something? Payne or yeah, Vista, somewhere out there. Is that a part of Omaha? Well, it's uh, in Sarpy County. It's okay. in, not in Omaha, so. <clears throat> uh, this guy, all I have is the last name. His, name is, his last name is Todd. Well, I called him Mr. Todd. He was with Carlson. I was with him five or ten times in 77, 83. And he was in Omaha. How old a guy is he? He's probably in his early 20s. And what do you know what he did? Any of these people did? I don't know what he did. I know that, well, actually, I shouldn't say it. I think he did something with, well, he was going to school. At the time, he was going to UNO. So that's all I remember about him is that he went to UNO. How many times did you say? About five to ten. And they were all he was, I, knew, I knew he was a victim from before and stuff because we had talked a lot and stuff. He had grown up being abused by these guys and he just was like 20, he was early 20s, I think maybe 20, 21. So was he was like, some of the early victim, earlier victims. Anyway. And they had, these guys had been going on for years before they even got a hold of me. Uh, the next guy is Carl Ellers, and he was involved with NAMBLA. I met him out in New York. And I was with him about three times, and a kid named uh, Harold Baker. Uh, he was a kid that was always 
with him when Carl Ellis got arrested. Uh, I'm not sure exactly when he got arrested, but he got arrested and charged with uh, sexual abusing some girl or something. He had actually sexually abused a lot of other people, but they didn't want to bring all of it out. Where was he arrested? I think in New York. But I'm not 100%. You know what his occupation was? Uh, no. You know where he's from? Was he from Omaha? Carl Ellis? No, he's from, he was from out there on the East Coast. So. I only met him through Namo. Uh, this guy is Tim Anderson. And, uh, Any relation to Harold? No. Tim Anderson was uh, probably in his thirties, and I met, I met him through Carlson too. He's always at the parties that I was with him. Well, I was only with him three times. Where was this? In what city? In Omaha. His interests were in, uh, at the time. He liked younger kids. How old was he? In his 30s. Okay, I said that. Yeah. Uh, next guy is Wayne Sunday, which I was with him one time. He's kind of a fat, plump guy, but kind of sick. Um, met him through Nambo, too, out in New York. Stayed at his place uh, most of the time I was in the time I stayed at his apartment. And, uh, he was on the steering committee with the uh, Nambo. He's one of the head guys. What did he do for a living? I don't know what he did for a living. I know he was the head guy on the steering committee for Nambo and did a lot of work for them, but I'm not sure what he did outside there. I mean, I could probably figure it out. How old guy was he? Probably in his 30s. Kind of bald on top, fat. And I had hair on both sides and no one else. And anything there. Uh, Next guy is Larry King, and I was with him under 10 times, which is actually about maybe five or six. Uh, the Larry King from Omaha? Yeah. Okay. And then Bob Franklin King, credit me. I met him in 80, and I met him in 82 or 83 at the parties. Uh, I seen him in 80 at rituals, I seen him in 79 at some, a couple of rituals, but I never really knew who he was until 80, and then I was introduced to him. In 1823, some stuff happened. I met him through, at the parties I met him through Bear. And then he started inviting me to his party and stuff, which uh, I never really had to do anything with him as long as I kept his big shots that he brought in happy. He didn't expect nothing from me. He, he paid me good. And Who were the big shots him. he brought in? A lot of them, I don't know. A lot of them were like senators and congressmen from other states. A lot state of them senators or U.S. Me senators? To them. State senators or U.S. senators? State senators, U.S. senators, congressmen, governors. I mean, uh, Do you that's know where I got involved with the Washington D.C. and stuff, and went to Washington D.C. a lot. And he was also, I believe, involved with Mark because I remember seeing him. A uh, fat man that looked like him, maybe younger, in the early '70s and stuff when I first got involved with Mark. So I think it was him. I'm not 100 percent sure. Off, off the Air Force Base, which is also where I met um, a Wall. And which Wall? Name it. First name. I want it from you. What, Jerry? What, what, what was his first name? Jerry. Yeah. Jerry Wall, the. Jerry Wall, the FBI. He was an FBI agent in Omaha. Traveled a lot. When, when did you meet Wall? I actually, you know, I trying to go through that. I not sure, but I remember seeing him and a lot of the things that we did all through the seven most well, midway through the seventies up until probably after about seventy six to about the time I got away from everything in eighty six. It's about a ten year period that maybe you know about that. How, about time, that how many times did you see him? I seen him a lot of times. Whenever I went to training and stuff, he was one of the guys that was there. I never really got to, I mean, not every time I went to training, but about uh, once every couple of months I'd see him. Training for what? Monarch. Okay. He was I, just want you, I just want you to say this. Yeah, okay. So I'm there's sure. no question about what you're okay. talking about. You understand what I'm He was doing? one of the guys that did the mind control stuff that would uh, kind of be like a protector. He'd kind of talk to you when things were happening and stuff and kind of 
trying to make things like he was on your side and stuff, and you could trust him. You couldn't trust nobody else, but you could trust him. Well, see, when I say Jerry, who or Wong, yeah. what I'm trying to do is I, I don't want anything to be uh, for granted. I want to, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, okay. Yeah. I want it all to be, I all remember to, him want it all to hang out. I remember him connecting with Larry King and stuff because they met a couple, they talked several times. Larry King provided some boys for him. Uh, there's a party, I remember there was a small kid that Jerry brought to the party. This is like in the late, before I pulled away from the thing. Um, 86. How old was the kid? Probably about six. Who was the kid, do you know? Uh, I believe it was his son. Because Pastor John showed me a picture of Wall one time and just asked me if I knew who the guy was at the time. I said he looked familiar, but I didn't have a name for him. And then we started talking about something one time, and he didn't have he didn't he didn't have these pictures again. So, but he mentioned something about some guy. And so I said, "You show me a picture of him." And he goes, "Which one?" I says, "One with the kid." And I knew I I know I seen the kid because it was the same kid. And Where did you see him? Where did you, have you seen the kid where? You saw a picture of the kid and then you tied it into this party? Well, see, I've seen the kid at the party, but I seen, when I seen the picture of Jerry Wall and his son, but I didn't know it was Jerry Wall and his son. All I said is the guy looked familiar, but I said the kid looked real familiar. The reason the kid looked more familiar than Jerry was because uh, at that time and stuff was, I had been going through all of the, I was going through at the same time and stuff, I was going through memory of all of the kids that were victimized at parties and stuff. And his face was one that was had a party and stuff in it. I have a thing tendency to when I see the pictures of the victims, I have a tendency to recognize them before the perpetrators because in the past when I was doing the MPD and stuff even, there was blocks on the perpetrators. There was other victims, there was no blocks on them. But the who was perpetrating or who was sexually abusing me or whatever they were doing to me. There was blocks that would block them out. I couldn't see what their face looked like. So it's like when I was showing, picture, yeah, showing pictures of them, there might have been a resemblance. Like, I, you know, I know I've seen that person before, but I didn't have, I couldn't connect it right away. With the kids, there was no blocks. So it was easy to recognize him, but I didn't exactly know what it was from. Okay, this kid was about six years old. What was the year on that again? That was about 86. 86. So the, the child now would be? He'd probably be about? About 13 years old. Well. 11, 12, because I'm saying six, you know, it's four, you know, like maybe five, six years old. And I was, depending on what year this is. This six, then this is I don't count 93 yet, so four, five, six. I just had six three. years. I don't know, I had Eight years later. 86 years old? Four, five, six. So I've been about six and a half years. Okay, so today, how old would that kid be? be about maybe 12, okay. 11, 12 years old. Okay, um, you said that uh, Larry King would send you out to politicians and congressmen, senators. So how did you know they were congressmen, senators? Well, a lot of times when we were like in Washington D.C. and stuff, uh, I figured it out after a while when they came in and like some of them had bodyguards. You know, they'd come in and uh, look around. You know, and they'd always be like they'd always have forward guys that were going before they would. If I made a shot, I guess a four guy would be shot. And uh, that was mainly with the uh, congressmen and stuff. The governors, we went to different states and we went to, I think I was along with two governors. What, what state did you go to and when? Uh, there was one out in New York, or New York or Massachusetts. I've been trying to figure that one out because we were in, where we were at, I was like real close to either side. So I don't know where it was at, but I do know that I met with Senator Barney Franks, who was from Boston. Or something like that. Is he a U.S. senator? I believe so. Ronnie Franks. Did he molest you? He had sexual relations with me. Okay. Is it Franks? F R A N K S. Okay, who are the governors? You can you remember? Do you, do you, did you recognize any of the politicians? Mm -hmm. I don't recognize too many of them. I didn't ask who they were. The only ones I really knew was. Uh, Studs, a guy named Gall. Uh, who 
one of these state senators from Nebraska is from that number. Did you recognize, uh, aside from the fact that you had sex with some of these politicians, at some of these parties, did you recognize any prominent senators or congressmen or anybody? Even though you may not have had sex with them. A lot of the parties I went to with uh, King had prominent people because in Washington, D.C., whenever we were down there, you guys had parties. At the beginning of the party, you had a lot of young, lot of young guys and stuff that were servers. We'd sometimes serve stuff, sometimes we'd be out in the background, we'd be walking around the party and stuff. Nothing was to take place then. After the party was over, the ones that were involved with him, or the ones that he was trying to get political favors from, that won, whatever they wanted, they would stay or they'd come in after the party was over, or the next day. See, so at the party, nothing even abnormal. I mean, if somebody was in there and stuff, they'd see no abnormal activities going on, so they would, you know, honestly be able to say that. You know, I've been to parties, but I've never seen anything, so. But I've seen, uh, some parties down in Washington, I've seen President Bush there, which I'm rather than not talking about him. What, what, wait a minute, what year was that? Was he president that was or vice president? vice president. That's when he was still vice president. I've never met him as president because he became president in 88, and I never went around him after that. You saw him in how many of these parties? I seen him in about three or four parties. And this every before. one of the parties, I had to, you had a little ID card that you had to have. And they had a little scanner thing. And when you went in, they ran it across this thing to get in there and stuff. They had special, and they had uh, special agents everywhere, secret service men everywhere and stuff. And I fell off the balcony <laughs> of the place. They had a little window and stuff. And I was sitting on there. And I fell off. Didn't get hurt. I got up, but I dropped my car, and I had secret service men. About 500 guns pointing, you know, about 20 guns pointing at my head when I tried to go back in. Until Larry King came over and straightened it out and said he belongs in here. And, you know, and I, that was kind of a spooky thing when you have all those guns pointing in your face and you're only about 15, 16 years old. But the reason was because the vice president was there, so they had to have all the secret service. But I also seen that some of them, I seen people like uh, Marine Reagan, which is, I believe, President Reagan's daughter. What, what did Fred, Vice President Bush hang around after the party was over, or, or what? He was after the party a couple of times, and we were hiding in the closet. But I did, I didn't do nothing with him. He was with a black kid, and he was with a white kid. What do you mean with a white kid and a black kid? Well, there was one. Uh, Tell me about the time when you were in the closet. Well, me and the other kid. We were. Who's the other kid? Uh, I can't remember right now. He was from the Washington D.C. area. He wasn't from around here, but uh, we were just sitting in the closet talking, just kind of trying to mind our own business because we were staying away from the rest of the party. We were in a back room in the bedroom. Was this after the formal party was over? Well, it was kind of during the formal party, but it was after a lot of people had already started leaving and stuff. And we remember that this couple of secret servicemen came in. One went to the window and looked around outside the window and stuff. The other one came in, looked in the closet, and he thought he'd seen us. Was it dark? He had a flashlight. The lights were off. He didn't even bother turning the lights. Coming with a flashlight. Looked in the closet. You know, I guess he didn't really look around it because me and him were sitting on the floor, right, and blowing. He kind of looked like this. He didn't even look down. He kind of looked like that and stuff. Turned around and walked out of the room and stuff. And then we seen this other guy come in and stuff. And I didn't recognize him at first. Was the closet door open or closed? It was partially open. Okay. So we could, you know, we could see out there and stuff. And, uh, it's so like the two people I knew as Webb. There's two kids that I knew as Webb and stuff. One of them was from uh, Washington area. Here's a white kid, and the other one was a black kid. I seen it two different times. Two different Webb. One was a white, one was a black kid. Yeah. Okay. One was from Omaha or somewhere out here. Was the white kid or the black kid from Omaha? The black kid. Okay. He's the one that was from this area. And uh, I seen at the time Vice President Bush go in and. The, all he did was the kids performed oral sex on him. That was it. Kids what? Performed oral sex on him. And the kid performed oral sex. Which the black kid or the white kid? Both of them. Well, first, I seen him at two different times. First with the white kid, then. Well, the when you were in the closet? Yeah. We were in the closet normal? both times. Oh, were you? That was our normal hideout. I mean, uh, me, him, and other kids and stuff, that's where we hid out at. 
We go out in the closet and stuff when we want to get away from the phone. So you were in that closet twice when Pre Vice President Bush came in? No, I was in the closet more than twice. Isn't it? About I mean, when Vice President, President Bush came in. Two separate parties, once with a white kid and once with a black kid. Yeah. Yeah, right. So you saw him twice. Yeah. And the kid had to perform oral sex on him. <laughs> and what happened after they finished? And he just got up and I left and after we got past the what? The white kid knew that we were in there. The white kid didn't have any idea that anybody was else in the room and stuff. But the white kid, uh, you know, his name was also Joe. You know, Webb and I'm not sure if that was his real name or if he just tried to copy the black kid because the other kid's name was Wally Webb. It was his name. And the other kid was Joe Webb. But uh, he told us, okay, you guys can come out of the closet now. The white kid did. Yeah, he knew we were in there because... He was one of the kids that used to hang out with us all the time. Used to, maybe like three or four of us would just sit in the closet and stuff. And well, he used to hang out in the closet and stuff. He figured you were in there, right? Well, he knew we were in there because he seen us go into the bedroom before we went in there. So we told him we were going in there. He said, we're going to go in and, you know, in the bedroom stuff and talk. Because that's what we did. We went in there and talked and stuff. And, uh, so he says, okay. He says, I might come in and join you in a little while. Because it was the only place you could hide from where I came at. He never knew where you were at when you were in there. I always figured you were up in some room with somebody, and so I never went and bothered looking for you. So he just disappeared for a while, and he'd go and look in the bedroom, and never look in the closet, which had all kinds of stuff in it, too. What do you have in there? Clothes, anything. I mean, he was kind of a wild guy. I mean, he. I don't know if anybody knew that he was a drag queen, but he liked to dress up in women's clothing a lot of times. I mean, he got cleaner than Max, and. You're talking about all kinds of women's clothing. He had some women's clothing in there, but he had men's clothing, suits and stuff. Could it have been his wife's clothing? Not in his size. Okay. She's a small woman. Yeah. So did you see, uh, did you see uh, Bush there any other time? I just seen him at a couple other parties, but I never seen him do anything. So you saw him probably at a total of four parties. Yeah. You saw him involved in sex act twice. Yeah. What happened to this web kid from Washington, D.C.? As far as I know, he's still down in Washington, D.C. What happened to the other kid? Black Wally? kid? Yeah. Or Joe, Joe, no. Joe Webb was the black kid, wasn't he? No, Wally Webb. Wally Webb, okay. He used to mow them off. Yeah. What happened to him? I don't know. I... The only thing I know about him and stuff is what I've been kind of picking up here and there from what's been written about it in the book and stuff, even though his name's been misprinted or mis... Even though they use a different name for him, they don't use his name Wally in the book. What uh, What other politicians did you uh, visit? Let's say you went to two governors. One was either New York or Massachusetts. What year was that? That was in the early 80s. I'm not sure exactly what year. And where, where was the other governor? Uh, I couldn't even say for sure. I know it was down around the East Coast, though down lower toward Washington, D.C. because we were on a trip there and we drove to where it was at. So I'm not sure where it was from. Who's we? Larry King. He was the one that always, he accompanied me or he'd have one of his personal boys, well, personal men, because they had bodies by God and they had uh, all that kind of stuff down there. Did you ever see Bush in Omaha? No, I've never seen him on the I've been there. Yeah. But I knew uh, a guy named, that, I, that gave us a trip to the White House one night, and that was uh, a guy named Jerry Spence. He gave you a trip to the White House? Out. Yeah, he took me and a bunch of other boys to, for a tour through the White House. And when was that? Well, it actually happened about six or seven times. Did you have, did somebody have to have for the upper session? rooms where supposedly nobody goes. Did somebody have sex with you there? Uh, no, but we went and had sex afterwards. I don't know who they were. I mean, they were... Where, where did you go for sex afterwards? To a hotel. It was uh, near the Lincoln Memorial. Do you know who had sex with you? Spence, do you know where Spence is from? Uh, no. All I know is he was... Uh, who introduced you to Spence? Mike King. 
which got me involved with what they called uh, Bodies by God, and then they also had another group which I was involved with, which was um, a Dream, Dream Boys. Okay. The group that they ran, you know, Larry King was part of, with getting boys involved, boys and young men involved. With it. I'm going to show you some pictures. I'm going to show you. Four pictures. You want to tell me if you've ever seen these men before? <clears throat> you put them up for the camera first. But it's one. We'll show them to you all at the same time. Another one. Another one. I'm going to block off the uh, name, by the way, when I show it to you. Here's another one. Okay, let me block off this one name. It's. As a matter of fact, it's on there. <laughs> so, um, let me block it off. You can take a look at these, see if you've ever seen these people. I'm going to show it to them like this. Okay, here's four pictures. Spread them out right there. There. There and there. Something you've never seen. This one says it's a better picture of it. Have you ever seen Clarence Thomas? Just on TV. Okay, that takes care of that one. What about that this? is Clarence Thomas. Okay. Here's Clarence Thomas. Yeah. Okay. How about that? I saw somebody who's at some party with Larry King. See if you introduce me to him at all. Well, no, I didn't introduce him, but there's a name tag on. I'm going to focus in. That's okay. one thing I have. I have like a video camera in my head. Okay, focus in on that. last name? Alan? Bill or Bob Allen? Where'd you see him? Well, I see him in several different places. It was for, it was all dealing with politi political stuff with Larry King. You remember where? I want to say Dallas at uh, Fort Worth. Were at the convention when you went down there? Yeah. The ranch and then well, what, where, what ranch? in D.C. The South Fork, one where they I guess they filmed, what they say, Dallas or something somewhere. In Dallas, that's Dallas. Yeah, I said well, Dallas TV. The Dallas TV show. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Did you see him there? Yeah. And who was he with? He was with, well, there were several people. I don't know who he was with, but I know that there was a guy named Bill or Bob, Allen or Alex. I'm trying to get the last letter on the name. Alex doesn't sound right for the last name. I say Alan. I, I gotta say Alan because Alex is not a last name. This guy's name is Bill or Bob Allen. 
Okay, I'm gonna, for the purpose of the camera, I'm going to take the, the signature. This is an autograph photograph. I'm going to show the camera what it's last name. You didn't see this uh, autograph, this sign. Autograph. No. I'll show you what you came up with. That, for the record, that's Bill Allen. He was a Republican candidate for the U.S. Senate, uh, and in the past was a write-in candidate in 1990. Bill Allen. You identified him. Huh? You what? This guy looks real familiar. It's like the governor of California. You ever see the governor of California? It's on TV, but... And you never saw him in any of these parties? Okay. I think the governor is. It is the governor. <laughs> well, you can sure tell I don't try to make up nothing about somebody. If I don't know from any parties, I won't say nothing. That's right. That's good. Okay, keep going with your list. Uh, now, what I'd like to do is... Uh, maybe the next day or so we can go to the library and look at uh, all the U.S. King Congressman Senators. Yeah. They must have a picture of him. There's Jerry Studs and then there's a... Studs is where? I don't know where he's from. I think it's Jerry Studs, I'm not sure. There's a lot of Jerry's in there. Anyway. We're going back to Alan, did he ever perform any sex acts on him? Alan... Bill Allen was sent. Congressional Senator, uh, senatorial candidate. You just saw him at the parties. I see him at parties and stuff, and I know he was around after the parties, so I know he was aware of what was going on with him. And he was so. a friend of Larry King's. Okay. Okay, keep going with the list. Anything more on Larry King you want to mention? Well, I'm have to go on here separately. Yeah. Several people later. later. Several people on here and stuff. I try to go on and stuff. Take them. Okay. Well, the ones we need to go on separate, you let let me know. Let me know. Huh? I mean, I'll put an asterisk on them. Well, here I'll make a note of the name here. Okay. Oh, Citron, Vega, Anderson, and so forth. And Carlson is getting more. He's been through prison. In Anderson Bear. Anderson Bear. Citron. Citron. King. King. Who else? Well, we'll go through the ones from Nambla. In Nambla? Okay. Okay, keep going, then we'll come back to those. Okay. have to do a little separate chapter on each one of those. Next one is Hugh Hamill, and he was from. Uh, I don't know exactly which one, but I know he's in New York, and I met him. I met him on Trickland in Times Square, but he was involved with Nambla, and that was in about 82. And I was with him on, <coughs> about two times. And uh, I don't know what he did, because I know he'd been in prison, and I know he went back to prison, and I don't know what else happened. That all happened over a kid named Charles Dyson, which... I can explain a lot about that. What's that now? Done, done, what? Done, done, a kid named Charles Dyson, who uh, disappeared out in, from his home in uh, New Jersey in 82, end of November, first part of December. But he ended up going, but he ended up getting back home and stuff. And I was around him while he was abducted. I was out there for a week with him and stuff. And, when they abducted him? Well, no, not when they abducted him, but it was after he'd already been abducted and stuff, and I didn't know it. But I was at this place where he was at. They arrested a bunch of guys, supposedly. Uh, they knew where he was at, or they, they had something to do with it, which they didn't. He only got arrested, didn't have anything to do with it. Uh, yeah, John David Bomarito got away. He was the one that actually did it. Uh, police caught him and stuff. He was wanted in another state. They let him go. She's wanted in Texas, I guess, because this is, I, I got a list from David Thorstad on him, and also from himself. 
from John Barbarito. And he said that he had a deal worked out with the FBI in some town. He was working with them to try and get NAMBLA, some NAMBLA people in trouble and stuff, and try and put a bad name on them and stuff. He's working with some dirty FBI agents, which doesn't surprise me anymore. What town? Well, out in, uh, on the East Coast, I'm not sure exactly what town. All I know is that the ones he was working with were good enough to get the charges dropped in Texas against him for sexually molesting some boys. He had just gotten out of prison in uh, Buena Vista, Colorado for the same thing. Okay, yeah. spell his name for us. Bamarito? B-A-M-M-R... Is it on here? It is. It B M A E M A M M A R I T O First name. Barons. Yeah, he went by several aliases. Barons. And Barons for last name. John David or David John Bomarito. Okay. He was Bomarito. And you don't know. I uh, remember what town where the FBI was or what they were going to do. No, all I know is that he got away with this kidnapping. Charles Dyson and the other guy that was with him got in trouble for it and I was, I don't know, I think it was Hugh Hamill, Hugh Hamill didn't have anything really to do with it. Okay. I got, I got all that written down. Did this kid come back then? Charles Dyson, this, this, he, he went back home when I was in 82 and stuff. And I think he got back home either at the end of 82 or the beginning of 83, he went back home. And was, they got him on a bus ticket. And, was he found he by the police, home. or did he turn himself in, or what? Well, he came back home on his own. He came back on a bus and stuff, and the police made it look like... I mean, I, I know the kid and stuff. He, uh, the entire time he was with them and stuff, I don't know if they actually, if they ever molested him or not when he was with them. I know that he was skiing and stuff, because I was with him part of the time, and basically we went out and did, you know, had a lot of fun and stuff. And I don't think he ever, I don't know if he ever got molested or not. I think he did. Uh, was he actually kidnapped or did he go voluntarily? He kind of went voluntarily, but he was under the age, so it was considered kidnapping. And how long was he gone? About a month, I think. And Bob Rito happened the whole time? Bob Rito and some other guy that was with him. I'm trying to remember what the guy's name was. And, and uh, you saw him? You were with him that time? I was months? with him for a couple of days when I was out there and stuff. Say, out still, where? Out in Connecticut, it was at the Wareham, they had a Wareham cottage when they were at Wareham, Massachusetts, I think it was in. There was Wareham, Mass, yeah. And that's what it was in Wareham, Massachusetts, where they were at. That's where they busted, uh, I believe, either Dave, I think it was Hugh Hamill, and they, they also arrested uh, Harold Baker, who at the time I think was 17, they charged him with being, they, they had this big thing and stuff, making him look like he was a, uh, Sexual pervert doing stuff with minors and stuff. He was only like 17 years old when this was going on. on. Police were doing it to him. Police were doing what to him? Charging him with kidnapping or something like that. And he didn't have anything to do with it. I mean, they charged these guys with all phony charges. What police? You know, be, the Massachusetts police and the New Jersey police. And I know that they were false charges because I was out there and Hamill and uh, and this other guy Baker had nothing to do with this kid's abduction. They brought, these guys brought this kid there and stuff, and they didn't even know that he was abducted for a while. When they found out, they told him they had to go on. They, you know, they couldn't stay, these guys couldn't stay there. And, uh, <coughs> so it's like they made Bomber, uh, this kid Baker, who was like 17 years old, look like he was a pedophile or something, because he was messing around with kids that were about, you know, 16 and stuff, which were basically his own age. Yeah. Where are these guys from, these two guys? Uh, Hamilton. They're from the Boston, New York areas. With NAMBLA, Boston and New York City are not separated. Were, were these two uh, NAMBLA guys? Uh, Baker was, I know he's been involved full force with it. And uh, Hamill? Hamill, I don't think he ever really got involved with NAMBLA completely. I know he wrote a lot of letters to him, so I read a couple of them when he was in print, going to jail stuff. Nambla did a lot of legal work for him. They had their attorneys working with him, working for him, trying to get him out. What was he in jail for? On this charge? On this charge, which was... Trumped up. It was trumped up by the police and stuff because they were on a witch hunt. And after him, even though he hadn't done anything with that. You know, he'd done some with other kids and stuff, but he hadn't done anything with the one they were charging with. 
So they're making up for it, I guess. Uh, next guy is a uh, guy named Tank. Any gay bar in Omaha, they'd know exactly who he is. Although the Omaha police thought he was a fictitious person, probably, and made up in our imaginations, and that he actually exists and fits the description that we described him at. The uh, Tank is uh, who? He's a guy that he hangs out in the old. Old market area is kind of an old troll. Just hangs out and looks for kids or young guys. And he's white or black? <laughs> white. Kind of big build. Uh, kind of like a motorcycle fat guy. Lives up in, uh, lived up in uh, Honey Street at the time, which was where I lived out when I first met him. Oh, were you? When did it happen? Oh, I met him and. First time I met him was in the mid '70s, and I first got involved with uh, Carlson and that, and started going down to the old Diamond Bar, which was not really tech now no more, because it's about a block away. It was across the street from the bus station, which now is a parking lot where it used to be at. So we tore the building down, moved into what used to be the uh, Mosey's Inn, which my aunt used to work at. She was. Bouncer and the bartender. He used to throw guys out there. And Mosey used to be the uh, he was a chief, police, chief of police in Omaha. And uh, he's a really nice guy because I met him several times. And uh, after he died, they uh, closed up the bar and the uh, Diamond Bar took over, which is a gay bar, and they took over or bought it out. They moved in, but. <coughs> That's where I met him at. And uh, I was with him under about uh, 10 times. And he was at parties with, I met him on the run, and then I met him at parties with Ben and stuff. He was partying with them all the time. And the next guy is Fat Freddy, which uh, I'm trying to, his real name is Freddy, Fred Mertstar. He's, as far as I know, he's from, uh, he's still living downtown area and stuff. He's still picking up young boys. He's always, had runaways living with him and stuff, and he always takes advantage of them, making them prostitute themselves to other guys, to himself. Uh, at the time, he was probably in his 40s. Uh, so he's probably well into his 50s now, for about mid to late 50s. He said he's that guy that always complained that he was going to die of cancer and die of this or die of that, and he never died. Maybe he should have. I met him at the same time I met, fat, I met Tank. So they were kind of running together. They were friends that uh, he lived up in you know, Jackson Street, about 16th and Jackson. He always lived in the downtown area around the gay bars and stuff. I met him at the same time as you go out in the mid 70s. And I also seen him at the room at the party fair. And the next guy is uh, David Grote. I was with him five to ten times from 79 to 82. So I went to prison, I think that was. <laughs> I was out in uh, New York and I was with Mambo. So he was involved the same You know thing. what he does? But yeah. you know what any of these people do for a living? Mention that also. Yeah, I will. He goes to prison. If he's a prison next time? Well, I think he probably would be now. I think he went to prison in 82 or 83. I'm not sure. All I know is he disappeared for a while. Mambo was complaining about one more than the numbers were for child molestation or what? Yeah. Well, do these Mamba guys pick on girls too? Some do, but most of them involve Mamba are involved with the boys and stuff. Uh, they're just the ones I know. It's kind of interesting, their bulletin, they're for sexual freedom for all ages and stuff, but yet their bulletin is filled with little boys in it. Yeah. You know, at least that's what it used to be. I don't know if it is anymore. Because yeah. you know, I haven't seen one for. I have. As Paul, I've never seen one. But going on the memories of that person, I was probably about three and a half. Well, maybe more like four years now. Yeah. Been hard to get into prison. I know. They, they won't let them hurt. I don't think. And again, I don't know how they found me. When I was in prison, they started writing me again. They never did. They started writing me and sending me letters and stuff, encouraging me. And I'm like, I know what's your encouragement. This is, you guys are gross. 
Well, somewhere, they, somewhere in the prison too. Well, no, it's like when I got arrested. Uh, that's the weird thing about it. Nobody in prison knew me, but it's like they knew that when I get arrested and stuff. So it's like funny that they're in connection with the people in Omaha, and how would they know I was in prison? It had to have been somebody that they know in Omaha that would have told yeah. these people. David Thorstein was sure is dead, but we're not sure. nobody can get anything out of him. I mean, why would he think died of AIDS? Oh, they did. That's what they, our d Dr. Denson Gerber said. That he died of AIDS. Yeah. So if he did, then uh, kind of it's good and bad. It's good that he's dead and he's not abusing more kids, but it's bad because I just think about the kids that he might have infected with it. Sure he did. It's just kind of a whole idea, I guess. That's a different story. This guy is Jack West. I was with him 10 or 20 times, and he was from, he worked at the Max. He was a bar bartender um, for a long while. I mean, What's the Max? Uh, the bar? Max Bar, Maxine's. Right. Now, I don't know if it's Maxine's or what. But what it. city? Omaha. Across from the Omaha Public, Omaha Police Department, in fact. And look out their window and see them. In fact, all the gay bars are right around the police department in Omaha. It's their protection, I guess. But uh, Jack West was a bartender there. He was also a close friend of Alan Bear. Uh, he supplied boys for parties and stuff because kid, young guys would come in that were underage and stuff, you know, 16, 17 years old. He'd give them, he'd, he'd supply them with alcohol and stuff for sexual favors and stuff. Uh, he was just involved with Baron King quite heavily. Mm. So, you know, and the next guy was a guy named Tom Harvey. He used to be, I don't know, he did at the bank or at the credit union, but he worked with Larry King. He was at a couple of parties and I had sexual relations with him twice. He lived with, after he was like probably in his 30s, and he lived with his mother. Was he white or black guy? White guy. You know, chunky. <clears throat> he lived with his mommy. He was in his 30s and I thought that was kind of strange. But so is the guy. Uh, the next guy is a guy named Donald Sitzman, and he was a lawyer in the Omaha area. I met him on the run. And I also seen him at some other gatherings, but I'm not sure exactly. What do you mean on the run? The run in Omaha itself. Oh, that's the name of the place? Well, the run is, well, it's the name of a gay bar, but it's also an area that runs from 16th and, or down Leavenworth, across 16th Street. From about 16th to 18th and Leavenworth, over to Jackson Street, and it goes up and goes right around the Omaha Correctional Center, and it's where our, it's like a, it's kind of like Santa Monica Boulevard and, uh, is in out in uh, Beverly Hills. It's kind of that type of an area. It's where all the gay prostitutes hang out at. Like in Omaha, they got 17th Street, 17th and Farms, where all the, the female prostitutes hang out. And the gays just got a whole block. They don't just take one little corner. They take a whole block right around the correctional center. I mean, I guess it's just closer when they get arrested for something. That's where I go. Uh, they hang out there and we used to make jokes about, yeah, if you escape from this place, just make sure it's a Friday or Saturday night and just take off your jumpsuit and run down the street with your underwear. Some guy will pick you up in five seconds. And, uh, if you're a woman, you're going to have a little bit of problem getting picked up. But, uh, now, since when he picked me up, I was with him one time. The only reason I remember his name and stuff is because I stole his wallet. Sitzman? Sitzman. Sitzman. I stole his wallet. And I seen him on TV one time, he was talking, and this was like back in early, early 80s and stuff, and I said, I've seen that guy. He says, I know, and I thought, I, the person I was out with, I thought, I know why I've seen this guy, too, and I don't want to tell anybody I know this guy, but... What, what is Sitzman? He was a Sitzman? lawyer. He was... Well, he was who's lawyer? I don't think he was anybody's lawyer, but I know he was a big shot lawyer and stuff. He was working out of UNO or something like that. He oh. was a legal advisor or something. He worked with, uh, on some cases, he worked, kind of funny, he worked on sexual abuse cases and stuff, prosecuting and stuff with the state for uh, certain cases that were involved with, I think it was Sitzman or something like that, that was involved with some cases involving some people that might have had information with them. Uh, 
the front page, which the guy who did didn't have any information about Franklin because he was an idiot who was getting all his information from everybody else. Did you put some names on the bottom there that you missed? Down here? Mm -hmm. Yeah, but uh, it was just a last name, and his name was. Uh, come on, come on. So what was? Oh, um, I got a better copy somewhere. Maybe in this pile. Maybe not in this pile. Something like that. Yeah, that's a, that's a photocopy, so you need the original. Yeah, well, I had another photocopy of this same page that got a little bit more paint on it. Okay, so it's in there. It wouldn't be in the victim info. It wouldn't be in the cold info. Let me turn off the camera. No, I got it. Kids' phone? There's nothing else. It's like the blind phone. Ah! Yeah. Yeah, it was sitting right on the top. No wonder I could find it. Just underneath a couple other pictures. No, 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 that's not a good one. Murray. It wasn't on there, but I just remembered what it was. Okay. Center, because they were all like this one. Murray. He uh, was the guy who hang around with Tom Harvey and King and stuff, and went out to get lunch a couple of times and stuff, and they. I got him drunk one time and I ended up in bed with him. I don't think he was into that kind of stuff because when he woke up he was kind of like going, he didn't remember anything. What did he do? Murray. He worked at the bank with King and, you know. And that was in 83 in Omaha. I didn't bother telling him that. He did because he could remember. Why should I tell him? He was just drunk. I don't think he. Uh, you don't think he was one of them? No, because he was upset at himself. And nothing ever happened since then. And I didn't see him around the bank for very much longer after that either. So. He quit? I don't know. He just never came around. Well, did you hang around the bank? You told me the savings and loan there. The credit union? Yeah. Well, I didn't really hang around there, but I was there several times. I met several people and stuff. I went in there one time with a fake mustache on, and nobody recognized me. And I had sunglasses and a fake mustache. And I was about five feet tall. I thought for sure they'd recognize me because I'd been there enough. Uh, next two guys I've had to put together because they were always together at the same time. I believe they were probably brothers. Well, actually, they were brothers. They were twins. So I hope they were brothers. Uh, Tim and Mark Daniels, they were from Sioux City, Iowa, and they were involved with Larry King. And they were in their early 20s, and uh, they were victims themselves. They were part of a group up there that was running with a bunch of teenage prostitutes at the time and stuff. And, so a couple years ago, I guess a bunch of teenagers in Sioux City, Iowa, got busted for prostitution. The cops came out and said that the kids were running it themselves, which they weren't. But, of course, that's the cover-up for Larry King, because he was the one running them. You're talking about female prostitutes or male prostitutes? Male prostitutes and female prostitutes. But they said that the kids themselves were running the show, because one of the kids had files in his house or something. I don't know what the reason was, but I know the kid that had the file. You know, I knew one of the kids kept files and everything. That's probably why they said that the kids ran it themselves, even though Larry King was the one that ran it. Him and one of his black buddies that was up there. And in fact, one of the other girls who right now is indisposed until probably June for anybody trying to talk to her because she's on parole and she doesn't want to... Yeah, I don't blame her. <laughs> I, 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 I she doesn't trust him, does she? Yeah. Okay. And uh, I told her she was going to talk to Roy before she got out on parole. And I said, well, I said... I, I told my brother, I said, when you talk to her, because my brother's going with this for a while, and I said, when you talk to her, tell her she, 
don't talk to Roy until she gets out of there. I says, because that'll be a sure way to get her parole tonight. They'll make yeah. her jam it just like they did me. So I says, don't, you know, I says, not to put Roy down. She one of these thing. girls? She was one of the girls that went up there all the time and stuff and was involved with going to the parties and in Sioux City. And, uh... Were the parties between Omaha and Sioux City? They had a lot of parties between Omaha and Sioux City. It's like, uh, they flew out of Sioux City in the Washington, which really worsened to see quite often with Larry King. And, uh... Yeah, there was a lot of parties. In. Did you have any parties down here in Lincoln? A couple of them were usually at the Telephone, which is... Telephone? Just turn the computer. Wow. Sounds like Jackie. Gone. Yeah. Okay, next. We're back. After yeah, we were talking about... Anything in Lincoln went on, I just started talking about the Lincoln Hilton, you know, the fellow there and stuff, so. Oh yeah, right, actually, if anything in Lincoln. Right. Yeah, so some things did happen in Lincoln, but not, not on a regular basis, and it wasn't very often. Where did it take place? He's there for Lincoln Hilton. And who would be involved? These are the stuff with Alan Barron, he'd pick up young guys from uh, what was called the boardwalk at the time, with after hours and stuff. Is that here in Lincoln? Mm. Yeah, it was here in Lincoln. I don't know if it's still... It still was there, gay bar and stuff, and there were, like, kids that would go in there, like, 14 and stuff, and they'd never even card them because they... They read what? Card them. Oh. I mean, because they had a thing where if you drank, you had to have a stamp on your hand. If you didn't drink, then... If you wouldn't even bother to card them? Well, if you had a stamp on your hand, it meant that you were old enough to drink. If you didn't have a stamp, then they uh, wouldn't give you a drink. Yeah. They'd give you a drink, whatever. Mm. Yeah. And who else was with Alan Bear? Well, well, usually when Alan Bear came down here, it was usually with himself or young guys. Mm -hmm. So it was usually on his own. Okay. Mm. And there's other guys that were from Lincoln that I don't know. Who they were, though. Uh, the next guy is also from Sioux City, Iowa, and I was with him three times. I was with both Tim and Mark Daniels, who we were talking about twice. And that was in 1982. And Jeremy. How many, uh, I mean, how, what's his occupation, age, and all that? Jeremy? Yeah, the next guy from Sioux City. He was in his, probably his late 20s. He was a teacher in Sioux City, Iowa. Uh, and he was involved with Larry King in my chain of four and within three times. And I was dealing with um, the parties and stuff with Larry Uh <coughs> Next guy was, I was with five or ten times. He was uh, a guy named Charles Rogers who found out supposedly committed suicide or something and sent him to cancer and stuff. Uh, what uh, what about his age and occupation or twenties? I don't know what he did. No one knows that he was one of King's lovers. Uh, black white. Uh, I think he was black. So he was in Omaha. Yeah. Uh, next guy was with three times. All I know is his first name was Mike, and he's a lifeguard, and he's from CCD, Iowa. And that was in 84, at the same parties I met the teacher. And they seemed to know each other quite well. Who took you to Sioux City? Larry King. His trips with him. Driving? Yeah. <clears throat> Uh, next guy is Keith Jacobson. He was from somewhere out in uh, somewhere in Nebraska. I know he was kind of like lived on a farm in a small town and stuff. And recently they had him in the, in the paper and stuff. He got arrested for supposedly buying some 
child pornography and it came up and said that he was framed and stuff. And he got all of his charges dropped and stuff. And the only guy was a pedophile and like little kids and stuff. And he just said, well, I didn't even look at it. I didn't even have a chance to know what it was even about and stuff. Yet he filled out a thing, survey saying that he was interested in young adolescents having, you know, involved in sexual activity and stuff. And Where did he fill his survey out? It was a post office sting. It was a sting operation by the oh, government. Oh, I see. Then he got the material and they arrested him and they dropped the charges? He ended up dropping the charges because he said it was a setup. It, he was set up and the government was creating uh, crime by having this thing where you could buy the stuff from them and then they get you in the gallery. Why would they bother doing it and then drop the charges? Well, no, they didn't bother doing all of it. They, they tried to charge him and stuff, but he had some big shot lawyers and stuff. Partially involved with NAMBLA, partially involved with the gay movement all across the country and stuff because he admitted he was gay. And <laughs> Where'd that come take place? Right here in Nebraska. Lincoln or Omaha? Uh, more toward the Lincoln area, I think, than Omaha. It was some smaller town. I'm not sure exactly where it was at, but it was in us. Jacobson. How old oh, was he? Oh, um, Hurling is 30 at the time. Okay. Did you get tell me his occupation? I'm not sure what his occupation was. I know he lived on a farm or something. So maybe he's a farmer. I don't know. That's from 8046. The next guy was a guy named Harold Johnson. He was pretty involved in it. That camera on you? Did you check it? Yeah. Um, okay. And uh, <clears throat> Harold Johnson. He uh, was involved with a lot of different people. He was in the front about three or four times. And he was involved with Barrow, which Keith Jacobson knew Barrow too. And they, were, they ran a lot around together and stuff. Barrow supplied with some boys and vice versa. He supplied with some boys from a smaller town from where he was at. Occupation? Age? Probably 40s, 50s. Now he's probably about 60s now. Next guy, all I know is that his name was Pierce and that he was at the Dallas Convention with Larry King. Pierce? Yeah. I don't remember anything else about him. All I know is that we did something one time. And also, there was a guy named Johnson there that he was, they were both involved with the GOP garbage. With the, that's what he's the Republican Party GOP. I don't know. GOP stands for. Yeah, out of the Republican. <laughs> they were both involved with the. Uh, they were both at the Dallas Convention at the. Yeah, how many times did they. Uh, molest you? Once. Uh, each, once each? Yeah. They were in the same room at the same time. There's a couple of kids there. Just messed up. Uh, next one is uh, Barney Franks. <laughs> I mentioned earlier. I remember the name, yeah. Senator or Congressman, I'm not sure exactly what he was. I know he was a politician from Boston. Rest issues. He was involved with King and with Nambla. Uh, I met him at, in Washington, D.C. several times. I met him in Boston several times at different locations. So it was kind of in several different places. Oh. Oh, uh, she. Fifties then. She's probably in the sixties. I don't know. And, and uh, see, you remember if he was a congressman or senator? I think he. I'm not, I think he was a congressman. Sen I'm not sure if he's a congressman or if he was a senator. That's what I'm trying to figure out. Yeah. But, uh, he was mainly involved with, uh, with uh, Larry King, and that's who I met him for, even though they had disagreements on politics. And the reason was is that Bernie Franks was a Democrat, and uh, Larry King was a Republican, I was going to say homosexual, <laughs> but they both were, and that's the only common thing they had about him, I think. Was he, what, was he black or white? White. Older guy, kind of. 
got you about by your bill or something. Or something. You was that well built? Don't worry. <laughs> He's a lot bigger, you know, huskier size than, you know, not a guy of my, my size, which I don't know too many congressmen or senators that are my size. <laughs> I don't know too many people who are. Uh, next guy is a guy named Bob Cage. Gage, I'm saying. And uh, he was from Los Angeles and that was with Larry, or not Larry King, but Alan Bear. How many times? I uh, with him. One time, but he was the main one of the main contacts for the drugs in Los Angeles. Yeah. Did this mm -hmm. uh, sexual act take place in Los Angeles? Mm -hmm. What was the occasion for you being in LA at that time? Uh huh? Why were you in LA at the time? I was there with Case, and we were there to mainly in '85. I was just picking up packages and bring them back to Omaha, and, and I found out what the packages were, and I came to didn't want to pick them up anymore. You with Case? Again, well, I call him Chase. Oh. I said Case, but you know, I missed the letter. C-H-A-S-E? Yeah. And who is he? He was a guy that I used to do, go around on uh, scavenger hunts for Larry King, or not Larry King, but Alan Barrett. I keep getting those two mixed up because they're, they're almost tied in with everything, or together with everything, so I get them tied up all the time. <clears throat> I mean, he was Chase was from Omaha, but he was always one that was sent with me to go and pick up things, you know, go yeah. and get other kids from other cities. So how was this guy involved in the drug operation <clears throat> out there, Gage? Gage, uh, you know, I'm not sure if he was a customs agent or what, but I know that he was close friend. I know that every time I went there and stuff, he was always involved with, in the airports, and sometimes he had a uniform on, which was a security, you know, like a customs. Kind of lawyers and stuff. This was at the International Airport in LA. Okay, I live about five miles from there. So, well, yes. tell me about it. Would you, how would you pick up the drugs and all that? <clears throat> and how was he involved in the drugs? How was he? In, I don't know how he was involved, but I know that he knew the thing with the drugs because a lot of times when he'd bring the stuff to the hotel and stuff, he'd be talking to Chase and they'd open it up and Chase would check and make sure that everything was there. Uh, sometimes they'd take stuff out and they'd weigh it. And, uh, Would he bring this stuff to the, the to the hotel room? How did you know they were yeah, drugs? I know what cocaine looks like. Okay. Did you taste and it or anything? No, I was out. I was in the bathroom usually, kind of usually peeking around. And did somebody say that that's what it was? Well, when they're talking about it. You can kind of get the picture of what it is when they're talking about cocaine because they're talking about you know. Best nose candy you can get. Best, best nose candy. No, best nose candy you can buy. Which, that's cocaine. Well, I don't know. I never, I never snorted cocaine. I never did cocaine. I never wanted to. Well, did this guy come to the to the hotel in his uniform? He came to the hotel. No, I never came to the hotel in his uniform. We picked up stuff from the airport. We go to the airport. Uh, we get off our plane. We would be going in this thing, and they had this. I, I, it's kind of, you probably know what, the, what it's like going through customs. Yeah. And they have a room or something. Yeah. Well, he'd come out of the room with the bag. You'd get off a, a domestic flight. Yeah, we'd get off a domestic flight. Where would so you meet him there? We would have to go through, um, we'd go through the airport, we'd go to where they have the customs offices at and stuff. We'd have to go all over, I mean, all over the place to get there inside the airport because they got it off in one place, but we'd go there, he'd go in this room, he'd come back out, and give us a package and say that everything was checked out okay. Now he would had a uniform on there. Yeah, had a uniform on stuff. And okay. So he'd just, you know, he'd give us the bag and we'd usually just walk away or sometimes we we, we did this several times stuff where we actually flew in, got on a flight that came in from another country which wasn't hard because they fly us to California and then they take a plane to somewhere else, you know. Wait a minute, did you get on a flight that would take you out of the country? Yeah. Did you have a passport or a visa or anything? Well, you can get fake passports. I know, but did you have them? Yeah, we had fake passports all the time. 
Well, did you know, Gage put you on When we went there, we, we'd get, when we got there and stuff, we always had the fake passports with us because Alan Bear had them already set up and stuff. I had four or five passports under four or five different names. I Who mean, gave you those passports? Alan Bear did. He's the one that got them all for us when we left California with him several times. He had some of his friends that worked in that department make up all these passports and stuff so we could just... What department? In, I, what is it, uh... I don't know what the problem is. There's an office You apply for your passport to the post office. Yeah. Is that where you got it? Well, I'm in California, yeah. Huh? We, I'm in California, yeah. We had to go in there, we had to go through this stuff, but it wasn't that hard because we just went in, they took our picture, and the guy who made out the passports gave an island there and says, well, they've got five new, they've got five new identities. Wait a minute, where, where would you go? In California or here? In California. And there was an office out there where you'd walk in? Was there an official government? Alamber? I don't know. I don't know what it was. All I know is we went in, the guy took our pictures. I don't remember what the building was, what they were doing in there. I what don't think it was a post office because it didn't look like one. What an official government building. Just no, but the guy had all the right equipment to make out real fake passports. Well, did, did anybody, was there any money exchanged? I believe so, but i never seen it. I mean, I'm sure there was. So he didn't have five passports for each one of you then? Yeah, well, he had a bunch of passports, and he, you know, it was like five of us kids, and he took us, and we go there and stuff, and it's like, I remember some of the passports, names and stuff, and it's like, probably wouldn't do no good, because they probably wouldn't be on record anymore. I mean, this guy made them all, <laughs> made them up, they never You remember some started. of the names? Uh, Michael Kelly. Were you? Yeah. John Ryan. Uh... Theodore Bear, which is one of Alan Bear's last names. Uh, can't remember the other ones, but I never used them. The main one I used was Theodore Bear. Bear. Okay, so you'd go to you'd go to L.A. You'd go over to customs with your fake passport. And you get on a plane to Hawaii, and then from Hawaii you go to the Philippines. Okay. And what was the purpose of this trip? pick up drugs. Although we didn't know, we'd get, to the, we'd get to wherever we were going, they'd give us packages, we'd bring them back, and when we got here, it always seemed to, our packages never seemed to go at the rest of the people that were coming in for the international flight. Our packages never went the right way. Our packages always went in another direction. Because the customs agent was, there, was, agent who, was who, always there. There was a custom agent always there? There was custom agents who always be there and stuff. And it wasn't always Bob Gage, sometimes another customs agent, he'd sit there and we'd get off the plane and he'd say, well, we're waiting for you. We'd get your packages. Already. The other agent would say that. The other agents would say that, some of the other ones. Yeah. And just one, there's a couple other ones that did too. Every time we went there, they were How many customs agents packages. were involved in LA? Maybe just two or three, but they were ones that always came up and had our packages for us. I mean, I saw it was kind of strange when they did the packaging and stuff that ours seemed to go off a different direction. Did you suspect they were drugs? Uh, I didn't suspect they were drugs until I started seeing it in 85 when I started looking out the door and seeing them talk about the nose candy. And I actually Out started the door of the it. bathroom. Yeah. Yeah. 84, I, I suspected what it was, but I didn't want to get too nosy because I had, you know, it's like Chase told me, because I asked him one time, I said, what are, what's in the package? He says, don't. I'm getting nosy. He says you'll disappear if you do. So I never bothered. Why did they bring you along? You were just a witness. With the drugs? Yeah. Well, the reason they brought me along and stuff was because I was a kid. Kids are easier to get stuff past than uh, adults. And it's like because at 85 I looked like I was probably about 12 years old. I could act like a brat and I could really drive custom agents cr crazy and they just let you get out of there. It's like, Is that what you did? I gotta go to the bathroom. I gotta go really bad. Where's the bathroom at? And it's like the custom agent. A lot of times, if there's a legitimate one there and stuff, the other one would just take the bag if there was one there. And he, 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 you know, I drive, I drive the person crazy. Or the other kids that were with us would drive the person so bad that the one agent that was probably uh, on the up, you know, that was right, honest, was honest and stuff, would get so frustrated that he'd probably overlook something by the fact that the other agent would probably. Grab the bag or push it past, or you know, you could push it past, or something. Or sometimes they just get you out of there. But you got a variety of kids that it's like you kind of draw attention away from uh, trying. What it was is a diversion. It's 
kind of doing that, or it's like we had one kid that was, he pee his pants on call. And, uh, you give him, a, give him a word and you pee him, huh? Well, he, no, it's just like when we were going to the customs, I always wondered why this kid always seemed to uh, go to the bathroom. Yeah. You know, he'd, he'd be standing there, I gotta go to the bathroom. Yeah. Uh-oh. Oh, he went. It's like the custom agent was standing right next to him or something. <laughs> and it's like the guy was like, oh, no. It's like, uh, well, we got to get you guys out of here real quick, you know? Yeah. So they never suspected it. I don't think. Who, who all would be there? How many adults? These are just a couple. Sometimes they pose as your parents. Sometimes they pose as... Do you any women, older women, pose as a mother and father? Or... Yeah. Who were these people? You never saw them again after that? I seen them when we went on the trips. And they, it was like, I was, I mean, like this one lady I met, her name was Thelma, her name was, uh, was, uh, Teresa, her name was Jackie, her name was, I mean. Different names, different trips. Yeah, different names for every trip. And, I mean, so I, and I never bothered asking what her real name was. Who was she with? Who was an adult? The guy? I don't even know. I mean, sometimes, different. it's usually the same guy, though. I mean, sometimes different, but usually it was the same guy. You draw an artist's conception of those two people? I have drawn an artist's conception. I got that one picture of her that I showed. Yeah, someone worked on. Someone had it. I don't know exactly where it's not. Like, I know where it's not at. It's not where I'm working. I don't know. Actually, it's right here. What's the artist's conception of that? She's also the one that was with uh, yeah. Linda. She looks like Linda Benz, which is there's two people that look exactly like her. We're going to probably get a better picture of this. We're going to try to zero in on her. Yeah. She's young, isn't she? How old is she? Probably in her mid 20s. You don't know where she's from or anything? Mm -mm. Would she bring the drugs all the way back to Omaha? No, they stopped in L.A. Then who bring the drugs from L.A. to Omaha? We would. The kids would, huh? Chase and me and... So she would just travel overseas with you? Yeah, I knew her as Linda or Lisa, but she was with this guy in yeah. uh, Colorado, which was supposedly her husband, I think. You got an artist's conception of the guy? Uh, not presently with me. Okay. You get it? Yeah. I get it. She's pretty. You ready? Yeah, I'm trying to get it focused back on the chair. Let's set that aside. I want to make sure I have a photocopy of that. The thing that we want to photocopy is set aside over here. Okay. Okay. Uh, how many countries did you go to? The Philippines, I went to uh, Mexico, Canada, England, Germany, <laughs> the Netherlands, lots of times. Amsterdam. You're talking about a lot of heavy duty runs, aren't you? Yeah, the Netherlands weren't for drugs, and that was for. Pornography and solar pornography. In fact, bringing back probably about a ton of it. Maybe more negative. A couple of crates full of Did you take it over? No. Came back with it, but never took it over. And did you ever see the pornography? Yeah. Where would you, uh, who would tell you to go over there and do that? I was sent over there by people from Nambla. I was sent over there by. Uh, different groups that were wanting chop or kitty porn. And we'd go over there and stuff and a lot of times we'd bring it back in our suitcases and stuff and I mean magazines don't pick up on their metal detectors. Magazines had nothing picked up so they never checked our bags. I mean kids they never really checked you know, our bag stuff and then the luggage that went in the compartments they never checked. Well you said you brought back a carton or uh, a container? Well they brought back we, one time, or actually about two times we went, they had these crates, I mean, big wooden crates and stuff. And uh, the person we were with was supposed to bring back 
there were supposed to be uh, regular magazines and stuff, which if anybody would open a crate, the first five magazines in each stack were just on the top and on the bottom. And there was like 50 to 100 magazines. I think it was like more 100, like 100 magazines each box. But the first five on each side, on each in each box that was inside this crate, were actually just regular magazines from one different thing. So it's like if anybody would have checked the crates, they would have seen normal magazines. Underneath them, they had 30 or 40 different names on the magazines with nothing but kitty corner. And I remember having to go through that stuff with Nambla and putting them in envelopes. And then we didn't mail them from the Nambla office because their mail was really checked a lot. We took the mail, in fact, I brought most of it back here, milled it right out of Nebraska. They'd give me the postage for it, they had the postage thing on it, and it'd be milled right out of Nebraska from different locations and stuff, so they wouldn't, you know, post office wouldn't get suspicious or anything out of it. And it's like you're milling out several, right, close to 50, 60,000 copies of magazines to different guys. You know, How many trips did you make to the Netherlands for Cornwall? Yes. Ten, twelve. And each time you brought back, how much? Each time I brought back, the least I ever brought back was uh, three suitcases. Were they magazines or were they pictures or what? They were magazines and then there was also, uh, the main thing that we brought back was we had, there was a, like a, you know, movie roll rolls and stuff that come in the rolls and stuff that you can't open because if you open them, you expose them to light and it ruins them. Well, it was like film on them. And they were just like, each one was like a slot, it was like a film piece of magazines. So that they could take them over here and print the magazines over here with them. Instead of bringing back the magazines, they started doing it that way there at the last because it was harder to uh, catch by the authorities because they won't open, they won't expose the film to light, they can't, you know, it's, they don't, they won't ruin it. And uh, they can tell what it is by looking at the real stuff, but they never know what it is. Because you don't fly from the Netherlands to the United States, you always fly into England, you never take a plane, you never get a flight that says that you came from the Netherlands when you're going to back to the United States stuff with this stuff, because they know that the Netherlands has a lot of child pornography stuff going on over there. So you just get, a, you just stay in, in England overnight, you get another plane that's a, you know, another plane ticket, and you come in just straight from England. So nobody ever knows you ever went to the Netherlands when you come over from the customs. It ain't on the flight records or anything. Uh, that's, uh, they don't have it. But you well, your in. passport would have the stamp Netherlands on it, though. But you use a different passport. That's what oh, they, then you pull another passport. That's why they gave us all the passports, and they kept oh. giving us new ones every time we went somewhere. So when you'd go overseas, you'd have like five passports for each trip? You'd have several different passports. Sometimes you had to remember which ones you used in case you're in some of the same customs agents. That can come, that can come to be a problem. But uh, you know, it's like when we were going into California, so it was never a problem because they see so many people that you know, if you're going there every couple of months, they'll never realize it. But when you're going to another country and you're going to be going through the same customs, maybe twice in the next, in two days, you know. You know Two or three times in a couple of days, you take a couple of pack, you know, use the same passport, but you have a couple of them on the same one. So, I never. Did uh, anybody in Omaha ever uh, uh, ask you to go to the Netherlands to pick up the porno material? Mm, I picked up porno material for Walter Carlson over there, some of his group of stuff, and actually, I picked up some. Then he didn't send no money because he traded it. He sent them some, they sent him some. But he so sent them some porno pictures. Yeah. Who were the pictures of? Myself, a couple of dozen other kids, a couple of a couple hundred other kids. And when they arrested him, they only got like 10,000 photographs. Who they arrested who? Walter Carlson and Joe oh. Burke and that whole group. They got like 10,000 photographs. Oh. Kids from probably overseas, right? Well, kids from, that's just the kids that were from here. Oh, from here? The, the film that he got from overseas and stuff, he never kept at his place, and he never kept it in any other guy's places. He had another place that kept it at, and I know it's not there any longer, 
because I'm sure they've gone and went and got it. In fact, I know they have because I tried to go and find that after I talked to the police in the 86 and stuff, because I went and tried to find it, and it all disappeared. I mean, the whole... You told the police where it was, and then it disappeared, right? Well, yeah. Well, do you figure that the that the pictures that were taken here in Omaha ended up in the Netherlands and vice versa? Yeah, they probably use them over there. And can you, if I went to the Netherlands with you now, could you tell me where you delivered it? I don't know. It depends on if they change the country. <laughs> well, would you be able to go over there and find some pictures of the kids? Would I be able to find them? Yeah. You can probably go to the store and buy some of them. Oh, pictures of you? Uh, I don't and know. And some of the other kids? That one might take a little more doing, but I'm sure I could probably... So if we put you on a plane and sent you over there, with, say, somebody like me, uh, we could probably find some pictures of uh, American kids over there. Uh, of course, I'd look too much like a cop. I couldn't do it. But I got some people that could do that. Yeah. So I think, we ought to think when we get some money down the road, we ought to consider that. Yeah. Don't you think maybe your pictures in the pictures of local kids are probably already gone by now? Or you... Those type of pictures uh, will circulate forever because even though one pedophile might have seen it a million times, stuff, another one might think it's a new picture. I mean, when you're not wearing anything, they can't tell what the styles were and what you were wearing in the, at the time. I mean, what, are these pictures of babies too? Little two, three-year-old babies? No, all these pictures were like... I mean, I'm sure they have them. But I never was involved with any guys that were like that. Most of the guys I was with, my kids that were like about older than six, but under 16. And they were from six to about that, 10 years. Were any of your guys involved in uh, kids in under six? Two, three, four year old kids? Like preschool kids? Mm -hmm. Some sickos from California were. And some of them in Minnesota were. Those were usually ones that were involved in uh, generational Satan and stuff that I remember being involved with that stuff. Okay, and where in California? Bakersfield. Could you identify those people now? Pretty much so. And where in, in Minnesota? Uh, let's see, was it Jordan? Yeah, Jordan, Minnesota. That's where they had the trials. Yeah, well, I don't know really anything about the trials, but I know that I've been told about everything. That everything I've said has checked out, and people have told me just a very little bit about things I've said about being right, and I'm like, going well. Things you said about what? About what some people in Minnesota and some people in California. About the two, three, or four-year-old kids. Yeah, I'm like in Minnesota. Huh? Maybe some of the kids that were up there with the Benses. I didn't understand that. Oh, Bob and Linda Bens. Oh, were they? They were involved with the Minnesota Jordan. They abused their kids, and they got their charges dropped and stuff. And you know the names of other individuals in Jordan, Minnesota. Uh, James Rudd. He had a 17-year-old brother. They charged his 17-year-old brother. I remember this because we went up there and stuff. And the thing I got mad about was the fact they charged his 17-year-old brother and his parents and stuff with sexual abuse of children and stuff. And it's like a 17-year-old brother. I thought that was kind of wrong to charge a kid that was like that. He, he was abused all the time, too. He was one of the victims himself. That's one of the problems. And they end up dropping the charges against everybody. How about Bakersfield? Except for James Rudd. You, you know any more people in Jordan, Minnesota? Uh, no, some more, but I have to think about it. Think about it. How about uh, Bakersfield? Do you know any of the names out there? Oh. Yeah, I'm trying to think what they were. I mean, thought about them for a long time. There was a lot of Satanism going on out there. Because the people that were involved that were involved with uh, yeah, Tom Levay's group. In Bakersfield. Yeah. Well, the Levay's group from Church of California. And Did you ever get in the in the any of that uh, two, three, four year old uh, uh, sexual abuse down in the LA area?
Will you stop and start again with me? It's not making the noise anymore. Okay. Okay, we turned the camera on and off because it was making a funny noise and we're back on. We were just gone for a minute or so. Okay. Uh, Any of them down the alley area? It's working people that are involved in these two, three, four year old kids. Sure. You don't remember, or you not? You don't think so? I'm not sure. I'm, I'm just not. I don't remember. You don't remember? Okay. Uh, let's see anything more on the drug runs and the porno runs. How many drug runs did you make? I don't know. Sometimes I don't know. How many? Because, huh? I didn't guess this. Like I didn't just do drug runs from there. I did drug runs from other places. I'm sure because we pick up stuff. But okay, from what anything. period to what period? Just guess. From eighty eighty-two till. 86, probably 100, maybe more. All over the world, huh? Usually it's from Philippines or from Mexico or from California. Did Mexico you, is the easiest one to get Where'd you go in Mexico? I don't remember, but it's the easiest place to get stuff fast. Where, what, where did you go in the Philippines? What town? Usually it was just to, uh, I don't even know all in those airports we flew into. I was in town that there are, there are an airport in which is, uh, you don't know, remember what town, Mexico. Mexico? Mexico? Mexico, I'm sure. It was we went to Mexico City. I remember that. Plus, we went to several other places. And in one place we went through the border when we was with the media, it was always in Nogales because he was friends with the, the customs agents that were there. We had family that lived all over there. So we had family on both sides of the border, as far as I know. And we got my gallows. And so. <clears throat> That'd be out of Texas, wouldn't it? Nogales? Huh? No, that's out of uh, Arizona. Was that Arizona? Tucson? Tucson area? Tucson's right near the border. Yeah, it's close to that. Nogales, Arizona. Okay, anything more about the drug runs and the porno runs? Uh, not much. Need to know. Okay. Not stuff specific around certain things. Uh, we don't get. Forget about everything else? No, no. No, what do you mean? The rest of the list. No, no, well, that's what I'm saying. Let's go back to the list. Yeah, okay. The next guy is John Phillips, who uh, I lived two times. May 77. He was from. I believe Des Moines, but then I, I met him on the run in Omaha, so he may be lying about being from Des Moines, I don't know. Yeah. Not too many people tell me exactly where he's from. The uh, thing about him is there was a guy that just got killed in a car crash not too long ago named John Phillips. And he had been about the right age, but I've never seen a picture of this guy, John Phillips, who was killed in a car crash. He was from Bellevue, or Sarpy County, I believe, is where he's from. Where were you killed in a car crash? Up in the Omaha area. You, how do you know about it? It was on the news. And I heard when I heard on the news and stuff, the only reason I remembered it was because of the guy's name. And I remember when I heard it, I was like, going, the name sounded familiar. And I remembered immediately where it was from, but I was wondering if it was the same person or not. So it might just be a coincidence. Where did that activity take place in Omaha? Yeah, on the run. I think picked up that was maybe on the run, but he was the guy that introduced me to Alan Bear. In 1977, or not, 77, yeah, 77 when I was at some parties, so before I ever met Bear, uh, did anything with him. It was like, 70, I think it was 78 when I went to the party up there. This was at the, above the jail bar next sense, because there was a penthouse above it. There used to be, I don't know if there still is now, but uh, I can remember that penthouse perfectly. And I remember it had lost doors all around, it had a, uh, zebra skin rug, it had a white piano, it had an ivory tusk on the piano, it had a fake fire, or not a fake, it had a fireplace in it. The bathroom was the only thing that really stood out to me because it was odd. It had little cowboy scenes on the wall. I mean, the whole apartment was fixed up really nice. With million dollar furniture, it looked like. And 
the yellow bathroom with little cowboys on the wall in it. Kind of didn't mix. Didn't match for me. I mean I looked at it, it's kinda of like who did the decorating in this place? Well why were the little cowboys what were they doing? I don't know. I just, all I remember is I can remember the bathroom. Because I kept going back to it, I kept thinking that was a messed up memory. I thought it was you know, this can't possibly be to be a correct memory. And then I remember going into the you know, going out the one room into the bathroom and it's like I could never get it fixed, but it's like I just see little yeah. cowboy scenes on the wall. So I just said that was and something else that I know confirmed that that's what it had in the bathroom. They had been there too. And I'd seen the cowboy scene on the wall and the paper, uh, wallpaper in the bathroom. So it stood out just like uh, Colonel Aquino's bathtub stands out because he has the tiger claws on it. Talk about that later. Yeah, we will. We'll get around that. Yeah, and got into uh -huh. that guy. We got into that stuff, yeah. And we got yeah. a long ways to go. Uh, next guy on the list is Mark Kilmer. I was within three times. He was from Lincoln. Uh, of the what time? Huh? What'd you say? Mark Kilmer from where? Mark Kilmer from Lincoln. Oh, I thought you said something with the Century Times. I was with him three times. Oh, with him three times, okay. It may have come out of the Century Times. So okay. Like three okay. Times okay. The tire would start slowing. And I met him on the run in Omaha. And I know he was from Lincoln because he came down here several times and went to his house. And he was in his early 20s. Lived with his mommy and daddy. And went to school at UNL. And he was a pretty smart guy. Uh, the next guy. What year was that? 1978. Years old. <laughs> next guy is a guy named Bob Bentor. He was also from Lincoln and a good friend with Mark Tillman. And he also went to UNL. Year? 78. Uh, how many times? Three times. Three? Three times. Whenever uh, Mark or Bob pick me up, they're usually together. Uh, so. Where where did this activity take place? In Omaha. Oh. They picked me up off the road and we came down to Lincoln, so some of it took place here in Lincoln too. So. Were in their home, their hotel, or what? Yeah. Usually it was at Bob's house because he had an apartment. Mark lived with his mom and dad. Actually, his mom because his dad was dead. Yeah. And I know he he knew Arnold Bear because we talked about it, so he told me to stay away from the guy. So the guy was deaf. He said, stay away from Alan Bear, huh? He also said, you know, he was in his, I don't know if he's in his 20s or his late teens. I mean, he was not an abusive guy. Neither one of them, Mark or Bob, neither one were abusive guys. They were, generally, you know, for people who abused me, they were the nicer ones. And I don't you know if they were really abused because I was on the run and I was there for a reason. When you say on the run, that's where. That's, that's where the mall prostitutes hang out. That's where they hang out, like Santa Monica Boulevard in L.A., there. right. Okay. And this guy on the list, I knew him as Steve, from St. Paul, Minnesota. And uh, I was with him one time, and I, you know, I really fell on the list because besides being on the run one time, I, they just put down everybody that abused you. And at the time, I just started putting down if I remember the name or not. And this guy is a guy named Dave Kruger. Kruger. So it's Steve was uh, in Omaha then? Yeah, he made a trip to Omaha for some reason. He was in St. Paul. I remember that because I looked at his license. That's also how I knew his name was Steve, but I never, I, I didn't bother looking at the last name. I don't know why. Yeah. And, uh, uh, I was with Dave Kruger one time in 1978. He was from Des Moines. I met him on the road. Uh, so. How many times? So I don't know why. I don't know why. I said he's from the morning, still out of the bed. And I was with a lot of people in the morning, I said. And I don't know what. Next guy was at three times. Uh, his name is Fowler. I'm trying to remember his first name for a long time. And I met him in 1979. Uh, I also seen him at a party with Alan Bear. And I met him in Omaha. He was from Omaha. I also met him on the run. First picked me up on the run, and then to embarrassed parties because he didn't know I even knew Bear. And 
after we let Joe at the party, but uh, that's when that happened. Was at parties. Nice guy, uh, loved it. One time that I can remember, the reason I say that is I got around this guy and he drugged me a lot. So I don't know if it was more than once, but his name was Joe Ramos. He was a teacher from Chicago. And I met him on the run, but I also met him in Chicago. He ran a group that, a group of kids and stuff for another guy who got busted, who uh, had a pink file, had a big file with all these guys' names and stuff. Minus, of course, well, actually, I don't know if it was Minus or anything, you know, but nobody's ever came out with the fact that Alan Zbera's name was in it, Harold Anderson's name was in it. Uh, in fact, where did you know, this, where'd this file come from? It was a file that this guy had kept. He got arrested, not Joe Ramos, because he's never been arrested. He was a teacher. That's how he got most kids for his business, because they prostituted kids out. And uh, he was the one that recruited a lot of the kids. He's never been arrested, as far as I know. Never been found out about. But, uh, Why would he make a file of the perpetrators? Well, because it was all they were all over the country and stuff. And the reason was is he had on these file cards. He had what type of kids this person liked. Uh, and these people would like call him, and they would like order kids from their own areas. And these guys would like have kids from like I was a kid from Omaha, and I helped supply them with other kids that were my age and stuff to do things for men here in Omaha. And also in Chicago and New York. And so this guy was Chicago. Yeah, he. Blew and he had he had pictures of the cards. perpetrators. No, he had file or like file cards. He didn't. John Ramos didn't have. Joe Ramos didn't have them. The other guy had them. He the other guy got arrested. They found this file card thing, but of course, the FBI I believe is the one that arrested them. So it's like any of the files that they didn't want to become public would have probably disappeared. Well, who was in the file card? I know Alan Bear was because I was in this apartment and I had to make calls to some of these guys. And uh, so when I did, I had to set up appointments for some people. You know, and then I had to call the kids. The kids' files were kept in a different place. I mean, the file, they had over 100,000, 100, I'd say probably close to 100,000 file cards. Of perpetrators? From all over the country. And, I, and that's also where the mailing list came from to mail out things for. When when was this arrest made? I don't know what it made. When did the FBI obtain these cards? I'm not sure. It was in the eighties. I'm sure the FBI is the one that got them because they're the ones that were investigating it. They're the ones from and the where Chicago was the arrest made in Chicago? And who was arrested? I don't remember what his name was. I'm trying to remember this guy's name, but I can't. All I know is he had been in prison for uh, Muslim kids before that, and arrested them for being the same thing some kids and stuff. And whose name was on there besides Alan Bear? Oh, uh, I don't know. Carol Anderson's name was on there. You know, it was up, you know that Anderson's name was on there? Yeah. You what, you see it? Yeah. Okay. What other names did you see? Uh, it's Anderson and... You want to turn that off? Uh, it's 11.53, and I have a personal problem. I have to fly back to Los Angeles tomorrow morning, first thing, so we will continue this uh, at some date in the future, not too far distant in the future. Thanks very much.